So without delay, let's proceed. I'll just take one or two minutes to accept all the participants um, who are coming. Now, so about self-concept, since here we are discussing more about the development of self-concept in children, we have to take the child as to be the center of discussion. So when a baby is born, it born with no experience. As the baby grows, the baby experiences new things. Now here, the growth can be of two types. Either it is a kind of physical growth or it is a kind of mental growth. So in case of physical growth, the height or the weight of the, body, of the baby grows. When it comes to mental growth, there are several factors such as like love, affection, hatred, discipline. They all helps in the psychological or the mental growth of a child. Now these in turns influence the development of self-concept. As a teacher, we need to understand this and help the child improve their self-concept. So in this webinar, we will be discussing more on all these several factors which affect the self-concept and the development of self-concept in children. So let's begin the webinar and look on to the learning objectives first. Let's quickly check this learning objectives of the webinar. So after completing the session, you will be able to narrate how self-concepts are formed. You will be able to express the condition that help in development of self-concepts, reveal factors affecting development of self-concepts, describe values, attitudes, and moral development in children, demonstrate the importance of motivation and perception in children. You all will be able to explain the role of teacher, which is the most important in development of self-concept. So now, what about what is the self-concept that we uh, we are talking about? If you ask this question that who are you? Or suppose you ask a question to a three-year-old boy that describe about yourself. Then what do you think? What kind of answer you will get? You might get the answer like, I am Ravi. I am three years old. I love my tricycle and it was given by my grandfather. I love playing with my friends. Now, do you think this is the exact answer or this kind of answer you will expect from a 10 year old girl? Let's see. If you ask the same question to a 10 year old girl, she will say, I am Tina. I am 10 year old. I, I have a beautiful dress that my grandmother gifted me. I don't want to share it with Rina. So here you see there are different kind of concept that is uh, that is uh, building in these different children. Right now the question is we are here talking about the concept. So do we born with this concept or are, are these concepts are something which uh, builds over a period of time? When we are asking a question to a child about themselves, they will give the answer like this only that I am so and so. This is what I like. This is what I dislike. This is what uh, these are the things which I want to do or these are the things I love to do or these are the things I don't love to do and so on. So they will give the answer generally in the terms of appearance, possessions like like or dislike or emotions or attitudes. Now all these essential these things are essential contributors of the self concept of the children. As the child keeps on growing older, these concepts keeps on elaborating and the child will be able to understand more about self. So basically you see the self concept is all about how a person think about himself or herself. Self concept is about describing yourself or understanding yourself. To understand more about the self-concept, let's look onto the 
um, definition of the self concepts so here here you can see laura ibber said about self concept that the set of attributes abilities and values that an individual believes who he or she is so what are concepts concepts are regarded as the images we have in our mind that serves to help us to understand the world so in concept of the children if i talk about then self concepts are something what the child think has in their mind means the kind of image they think uh, they have in their mind and it will help the children to understand the world so concept are what they are the basic units of all types of learning human being from infancy to old age they learn new concepts and use the old concepts uh, in new situation of their daily life so now my question to all of you do all the individual have the same level of concept formation your answers are welcome here in the chat box you can write your answer in the chat box my question is do all the individual have same level of concept formation no okay anjali ma'am has written shefali ma'am rita ma'am ishrani ma'am nishira ma'am okay no so the answer coming has to be no um so now if the answer is no then what do you think is the factor that is dependent i mean which determines the kind of uh, concept formation in different levels it depends on aptitude okay upbringing thank you for all your answers home environment age differences yes very good thinking capacity um age factor yes individual differ in the level of the concept formation and this happens on the basis of their age intelligence and experience to understand more about uh, this self concept the human uh, the humanist psychologist carl roger has given one theory now he uh, did what he divided the self concept into three different parts on to that he divided it in ideal self self image and self esteem now let's look on to what ideal self is before i start with ideal self i want to tell you what real self is see we all have a real image of ourselves as we look uh, look like or whatever thing we have i mean whatever our individual look like that is the kind of real image he um, he or she possess uh, either she is um, honest or punctual if she is uh, good looking or not all these things are the kind of real image a person have right whether the person is very kind to animals so these all are the kinds of uh, factor uh, kinds of images a person can have right now that is the real image now there must be some kind of image what uh, what we idolize if i talk about the children so children from their um, young age try to idolize someone whether they are idolizing their father the way um, their father goes to office work other um, or they are um, thinking their mother has to be the idol the kind of uh, uh, enthusiasm her, um, their mother is having or maybe they idolize someone else their friends or someone and uh, some another uh, relatives in their family so they always idolize someone so that is what ideal self is all about right the ideal self is about what we want to be with a period of time we develop um, we develop that kind of feeling in ourselves so that is what known as ideal self right now what is this self image whatever we think of ourselves we just develop an image in our mind that yes this is uh, this is what i am like so the kind of image we have in our mind is the self image now what is self esteem self esteem is uh, this self esteem term it is used to describe a person's overall subjective sense of personal worth or value means how much you appreciate yourself means how much you like yourself so that shows your self esteem right to understand this let's quickly see one clip over here
so i hope you all are able to understand this clip so here you see there is a, a small little girl so in this um, particular um, clip it is very much uh, clear that what kind of self image the girl was having what kind of self esteem the girl was having and the kind of ideal self she thinks um, that she will uh, she want to achieve right this slide perfectly describes all these three concepts the child when she just walk by the mirror she thinks that uh, she is not looking that good but as soon as the reflection from inside came she realized her worth she realized that what kind of value she have for herself isn't it so i hope you all like this now moving ahead now here i have some questions for all of you we will be able to understand more about the self concept and development on the children if we will be able to understand it by how we can uh, we can um, we can understand what self concept is all about so i have written some questions over here i want everyone to answer these questions in your mind no need to write it in the chat box just go through the questions and try to answer the questions written here so the questions are like do you like your appearance when you see yourself in the mirror do you feel comfortable with yourself most of the time do you express your opinions freely do you accept compliments graciously do you make realistic demands on yourself so these are the few questions everyone if the answer for most of the question comes as to be yes then the self concept is towards the positive side otherwise if most of the questions are coming as to be no then your self concept is going towards the negative it's little bit towards the negative side i hope you all have gone through the questions and the answers are already there in your mind now let's just proceed quickly with the another slide so we have some specific cells over here let's discuss what these specific cells are all about so we have the academic self the artistic self the athletic self the emotional self the moral self and the ideal self out of which we already have discussed about the ideal self so we will be talking about the academic self first so what does this academic self is all about an individual's evaluation of his or her success in academic or educational studies is all about the academic self it relates to how well an individual feel they can learn you are in uh, you are going to a class in that class there will be future there will be children now all the children will not feel same about their academic achievements some of them will think that yes academically i am very strong some will think that yes i am academically not that strong so this is what how the children believe what they are like towards the academics coming on to the next one the artistic self so from the word only you can understand artistic means the kind of creativity means uh, how the individual think how he or she is in terms of creativity there are few children who are very good in creativity i mean uh, in drawing in craft they are very good so they are uh, they have a positive kind of artistic self coming on to the athletic self again there are children who are very um, you know very good in athletics they are good in sports they have the zeal of doing something in sports so they have a positive kind of athletic self on the other hand there may be some students who don't like to go on to that field so there are a different kind of children you will get in uh, the class and they will have different kind of self uh, selves among the um, themselves now coming on to the emotional self what is this emotional self is all about this is how a person think he is emotionally there are some children who will feel that i am not um, uh, that i am like a um, short tempered if uh, he will come to me i will fight that kind of aggression they have some child are um, some child you will be able to uh, come with in the uh, classes that they are emotionally very weak if you will uh, talk to them in loud voice they will start crying so they have a different kind of emotional self 
Now coming on to moral self. Now what moral self is all about? Moral self is there are some moral values in each and everyone's life starting from the birth only. They get these moral values either from the parents, then from the um, their peer groups, then from the society. So they just uh, develop that kind of moral self among themselves. So these all are some specific selves that you will be able to see in the children in a class. Now moving ahead with the another slide. Now, now the question is very important. How are self concepts formed? So when a child is born, the child born with certain biological inheritance and the experience the external world through their sense organs. Since they first experience the world with the help of their sense, sense organs, that's why the sense organs are regarded as the gateway of knowledge. So in some child, these concepts are fully developed. In some child, this is partially developed. Now my question to everyone, uh, what do you think is the reason for this development of concept, I mean this ununiform development of concept in the children. Please write your answers in the chat box. What do you think is the reason behind this uneven distribution of concept among the children? Please write the answers in the chat box. Okay, I'm not coming up with the answers. Okay, there is no answer which is coming. So let's proceed just. So the the factors or the things which are, um, which actually, uh, okay, the now the answers are coming. Psychological factor, home environment. Yes, uh, thank you for the answers. So the cultural differences or the cultural um, influence, the home environment, the school, the neighborhood, all these factors are the one which determine the development of concepts in the children. Now we know that early age is very, very crucial for the development of concepts. As children begin to understand the world around them, gradually they learn about different concepts like life, death, bodily functions, space, weight, number, sex roles, uh, social, uh, social awareness, beauty, self, etc. Now, the development of concepts depends on the stimulation and opportunities that a child gets during early childhood. For example, a child who got opportunity to travel to different countries in early life is able to understand that people have different languages, different culture across the world. Now compare this situation with a child who has not got such opportunity. For the child, the understanding of these concepts will take place but with great difficulty. Hence, we can say not all children understand and develop all the concepts on time. Also, the level of understanding different concepts are not equal, they are unequal. And the foundation laid in the babyhood begins to extend and grow as the child starts to interact with more people. The child first social world constitute of parents, siblings and relatives. It's very important that how the child is being treated by the family member in his, um, uh, you know, starting uh, years. And this will help in shaping the, the self concept of the children. Development of favorable or unfavorable concepts depends on life happenings during the early childhood. Sometimes unfavorable concept may develop. Uh, this will happen when the children will feel that the parents have unrealistic aspirations from them. When the other peer member begin to socialize and one is still self-bound, when social um, attitude towards them are unfavorable. Due to these factors, the attitude of the child regarding self also becomes unfavorable. Parents think that their child will outgrow this unfavorable self-concept over the time. But the truth is that, that uh, the more the child will grow, these unfavorable self-concepts become more persistent. So whatever causes these unfavorable, unfavorable concepts, these develop uh, at very early childhood. So happiness is very much important for the development of favorable concepts during childhood. Now, 
we will discuss some of the factors which affect the self concepts so there are few factors which are listed over here like physical condition body build names and nicknames social ac acceptance then we have success or failure then gender and then intelligence so these are the factors that affect the self concepts so let's just discuss in brief what and how these factors are uh, helpful i mean how they affect in the self concept starting with the first one that is the physical condition so good health always facilitates proper and healthy growth poor health or physical defects cuts off children from their interaction with the other peer members the helplessness and weakness makes the child feel inferior so what happens when a child suppose in the school you um, uh, you are you are able to see that there are a lot of children now amongst those children there is a child which is who is not feeling comfortable with them now why what is the reason you will try to understand you you are coming across that uh, that the child is having some physical condition i mean the child is going through certain physical condition uh, which is depriving him to attain the other peer members and also the uh, the uh, peer group is not uh, trying to uh, you know help him with that or they are not accepting him because they they don't think that he will uh, he will be able to cope up with all those uh, you know, friends and all those uh, peer members or peer group so this happens uh, every time this happens and this physical condition is one of the factor which really affects in the development of self concept of the children now the child who is having certain uh, such condition will obviously feel inferior amongst those next is the body build when the child fail to grow to the normal size they usually are unable to keep pace with the others of their age same with children who are overweight the feeling of such differences with other of the with uh, their peer group make them feel inferior you might have come across uh, the situation in the classroom that uh, there is a child who is overweight and that child is uh, sitting alone not talking to anyone this is because the peer a group uh, may uh, feel like he uh, he is not um, you know he can't belong to us that kind of feeling so because of that what will happen is the child who is having certain uh, i mean who is having such body build will uh, try to think that um, i'm not good enough or i'm not worth for anything these kind of uh, thinking it just comes now names and nicknames so nicknames th these all start for fun but sometimes they tend to persist and some children feel ridiculed by this if the nicknames suggest a physical or personality trend it leads to feeling of inferiority so this is uh, obviously happening to all the uh, places i mean the nicknames are given to the uh, children but they don't take it uh, with uh, you know sometimes the children they just take it with um, uh i'm graceful uh, gracefully they, they just take it they think that okay my friends are loving me that is why they are giving me such name but sometime what happen they think that because i look like that and that is why i uh, i have given such name so this actually makes them feel inferior so this thing should not happen now the school environment so teachers try to bring about good understanding with the children however sometime teachers uh, use discipline uh, that the children consider unfair will bring about feelings of disrespect for the uh, teacher as well as for um, for the self means sometime what happens if in a group the students are doing some mischievous activity and the child and the teacher punishes the whole group maybe there is a child who is there in the group and, and has not done anything and he is constant uh, const um, and he is just telling his uh, teacher that uh, ma'am or sir i have not done anything i was not there um, when they are all doing these mischievous activity but the teacher is not able to listen i mean the teacher is not in a mood to listen because uh, now the teacher has got uh, i mean the teacher caught the whole group so now punishment has to be given so now in that case the uh, other child will think that the kind of activity or the kind of punishment he is getting that is unfair so in this case the child will develop a kind of you know um, disrespect for the teacher and also he will think uh, he won't develop a um, positive uh, self a concept for himself now going on to the next topic that is the social acceptance so being accepted or not by the peer group influence the personality of the child 
uh, and it affects the development of self concept children who are very popular or children who are least popular both are more affected by this than the other which comes in between it means that if there is any child uh, who is very popular among the peer uh, peer groups or they are very uh, i mean that uh, that particular children is uh, you know that particular child is uh, so famous among his peers so obviously the kind of self concept boost he gets is uh, a lot and on the other hand if there is a student who don't uh, i mean there is a child who don't have any kind of uh, any such group then obviously he feels to be cut off from all these uh, things so he just feel bad about himself sometimes what happen he feels in there is a inferiority uh, complex that comes uh, in that children uh, now moving on to the next one that is the success and failures so children are expected to perform certain tasks uh, for their age now these tasks are usually carried out by most other of their age due to some reason some children may not be able to perform these tasks now success and failures these are the two important factors which uh, actually helps in the development of self concept success bring about the feeling of confidence and self acceptance other, uh, on the other, other hand failure it brings out the feeling of inadequacy when success rate is high and prestigious greater self concept building happens continuous failure when happen with uh, some child um, it damages the effect of of child i mean it damages the effect of uh, formation of self concept among the children or it also damages its personality now the gender in our country girls soon get a feeling on inferiority by the roles they are forced to play this result in decrease in self evaluation more so the society adds up to it hence it is up to the teachers to make the children to understand that there is no such discrimination and that both girls as well as boys are equal in all aspects now the last topic but most important is intelligence if children's intelligence is deviant from the normal their personality is bound to be adversely affected by it it will not uh, be long before the children realize that they are less than the average and a feeling of inferiority begins to develop because of this they be, uh, they begin to feel shy and start to keep uh, start to keep themselves away from everyone it it is uh, sometime possible that they will develop um, a kind of aggression among themselves so in this regard how a teacher can work a teacher in the classroom has to be aware of the role of each of these factors and see how she can facilitate the development of good self concept in the children in order to facilitate good health she should impress upon the pupil the good practices such as hand washing hygiene combing hair brushing teeth twice or uh, daily um, and then daily um, uh, activities like uh, uh, bringing uh, bringing the hankies they should also uh, uh, monitor the eating habits and rule out the practice of children eating junk food she should not allow the use of nicknames bring about good understanding and unity among the children uh, among the students and bring about the social ex acceptance within the classroom and outside when children fail in test the teacher should take individual interest and find out the is a reason in most instances the cause of failure are because of lack of coordination at home to facilitate learning so when a teacher is affectionate enough when the teacher is understanding loving half of her job is done for the remaining half she needs to put in some effort in her efforts she should balance the gender with no discrimination to gender and try to reduce the show of high intelligence of others in presence of the average and below average when all are treated equally the chances of the average and the below average picking up are very high if they are discriminated and issues are made regarding their failures in the presence of other students it may result in the development of poor self esteem which is not good at all so this is all about the factors which uh, which affect the self concept let's move towards the next one that is the development of values in children 
Now let's quickly understand what this development of value in children is all about. So values, what are values? Values are very important because it helps us to grow and create the future we want to experience. Now values are um, values that are passed on to the members of the society are uh, well defined. The values are what people consider important in life and what is good or worthwhile. They are acquired mostly by the personal experience in life. We have a value system usually which varies from society to society. It, uh, it, tells, you, it tells you a lot of things about what to do, what to not, and a lot uh, more in that. Let's quickly see what are the categories of values I have written over here. So there are six categories of value we have to go through. So we will be discussing about each briefly. Starting with the personal values. What are personal values? Personal values are those beliefs we had most dear to. It differs from person to person and it depends on one cultural upbringing and the life experience. Not every child in, in the class will be uh, from and um, they are from the same cultural background. No, their cultural background could be different. Also, the kind of life experience they have come through that will be also different. So they will have different kind of personal values. Each and every child in the classroom will have different kinds of personal values coming on to the social values social values are the set of values or principle which is defined by the society now these values provide boundaries between what is right what is wrong what is permissible what is prohibited what is illegal what is desirable which social values are essential which are not so these social values are very, very essential for the maintaining for maintaining the healthy relationship between the child or between an individual and the society. Coming on to the moral values. What are moral values? They are the behavioral practices, goals and habits which are validated by the society. We are part of the society and the society is the one which tells us about the kinds of goals and habits which should have. Now, moral values are embedded in one's behavior through a long process of observation, education and social guidance. No matter which community, which religion, which region you belong to, moral values such as truthfulness, loyalty, faith, honesty will be equally respected everywhere. Now, coming on to spiritual values, spiritual value is all about how a person thinks about the kind of, you know, um, uh, sense, uh, the kind of values they have about the spirituality. Again, the cultural values, the kind of uh, cultural upbringing, um, the kind of uh, things they have in themselves, which depends on the culture calls the cultural values. Now, universal values are those values uh, which has same, I mean, a value uh, in the universe, uh, if it has the same value for all the sphere of human, means if there is something that you believe and that uh, your belief is same in all the human aspects, then it will be called as the universal values. So we as a teacher should always look on to how uh, we can bring up these values in children. Uh, the development of value in children is very, very important. We should look on to that because as, if the positive value development will take place in the children, then they will be able to develop their concepts in a right direction. Now moving ahead. Now, development of attitude in children. First of all, when we say about attitude, what, what do we understand about the word attitude? Attitude brings difference in the life of almost everybody and our success and failure depend on our attitude towards our work and abilities. Attitude denotes adjustment of individual towards some selected person, group or institution. The attitude result in a state of preparedness or a state of readiness to respond in a particular manner under particular circumstances. As Freeman defines it, a dispositional readiness to respond to certain situation, person, object or ideas in a consistent manner which has been learned and has become one's typical mode of response is all attitude about. Now, attitude of children develop at home first and then after that it develops in the school and with the peer group to which they belong. The personal 
personal experience gained during the course of interaction with the society also helps in the development of attitude among the children. Now, attitude formed on the basis of poor knowledge are most likely to change with the increase in knowledge about the issue. All are associated with a number of groups. Children are also associated with a lot of groups such as family group, peer group, religious group, cultural group, class groups and so on. So uh, the effect, um, as a teacher, we should always uh, think about developing good attitude among the children. The effective attitude and actions employed by the teachers ultimately can make a positive difference on the life of the student. By examining prior educational experience, teacher can discuss what they should or should not do with the class of students. Um, a teacher should be genuine, caring, uh, she should be uh, she should have kindness a willingness to share the responsibility involved in the classroom a sincere sensitivity to the students diversity a motivation to provide meaningful learning experience of to all the students a teacher should always stick on to these factors now how to develop perception in children now perception is very very important the word perception denotes the process of getting to know the environment by the uses of sense so the way in which we interpret the information gathered and processed by the senses that is very much important in development of self concepts in children without the ability to perceive it is impossible for the developing child to have a real sense of who they are and how they fit into the world now, uh, this perception is identified as necessary for the child to be able to store knowledge. Perceptual development is really very vital. I mean, it's, it's vital for the developing child to reach to the key of development milestone and go on to succeed within education. Perceptual development is absolutely crucial for the developing child's hand-eye coordination to be able to socialize and acquire both knowledge and uh, language. So perception affects um, a child's uh, response to the, stimu uh, to the stimuli. Now, how to develop um, and enhance motivation? To understand this more effectively, we have to understand what motivation first. So young, ch uh, young children, they learn from everything what they do. They are naturally very curious. Um, they want to explore the things. They want to discover the things. So if they are exploring something and if they are discovering something and that something is uh, bringing pleasure or success to them, they will try to learn that thing again and again. So during their early years, children uh, form the attitude about learning with what um, which last with them. Uh, uh, with um, which last with them for lifetime the children who receive the right sort of support and encouragement during these years will be creative adventurous and um, will able to uh, learn throughout their life children uh, who do not receive these sort of support um, in their early stages they will not form such kind of you know motivation among themselves so one of the most influential internal factor in the child in child um, self-concept building process is the motivation whether it is the intrinsic or extrinsic means it is coming from the inside or it is just building from uh, it's coming from outside so that is what which is very much important now a highly motivated child will stay involved for a long period of time whereas an unmotivated child will give up very very easily right now there are some factors then we, uh, that we will discuss about. We will start with the choice of challenge. So cho choice of challenge is one characteristic of motivation. Children who experience success in meeting one challenge will become motivated. Sanjana ma'am, please switch off your microphone. Thank you. So children who experience success uh, in meeting one challenge will become more, uh, become motivated. Now these motivated learners will choose an activity which is uh, slightly difficult from the previous one so that it uh, they can challenge themselves whereas um, 
the unmotivated children they will not do so they will try to pick some uh, activity or some work which is bit easy so that while doing it they will be able to get the success instantaneously now the next is the amount of dependency on adult so this is the another factor children with strong intrinsic motivation do not need an adult consistent uh, um, adult constantly watching and helping with uh, helping them with their activities so children who have a lower level of motivation they want that every time the uh, the some adult is uh, should be there to help them out with their work the last one is the um, level of emotion children who clearly motivate uh, who are clearly motivated they will display a positive uh, positive emotion they are satisfied with their work they enjoy their activity whereas the children who are not that much satisfied with their work they will be bored they will appear quiet they will sit in a corner they won't um, try to uh, you know uh, come up with their ideas and so on so they will not take um, play in doing the uh, doing the particular work they will always always come with the complaints so as a teacher what we can do is we are the best judge for the student for the child's mood and with uh, that we will be able to shape up their um, uh, uh, their concepts now uh, teacher um, as we are the teachers we have to understand one thing that when we are teaching the young children our goal should be uh, appropriately support for the development of motivation now the uh, the kind of uh, uh, you know kindness we show the uh, the kind of motivation that we will uh, give to the, our children that will be helpful for them to um, come up with more challenges uh, more challenges or more challenging uh, activities now the last top the last point when children are deeply involved with the activity we should not um, interrupt them in between or should not ask them whether they need help or not no let them do that okay also we should not always go for the uh, thing of punishment and uh, you, you know the rewards sometimes the children what they will think that they will uh, they will uh, try to do the work when they will uh, be getting some rewards out of it so that should not happen now as we have already understood about the concepts uh, about the self concept the development of self concept the role of motivation um, the role of attitude and values in development of self concept also we have discussed about how the uh, self concept building is um, it starts from the very uh, first age, uh, first um, age so let's just see one video clip here you have to just read the subtitles it will um, there is i think uh, there is no sound which will come
So I hope you all able to understand by this that how the self concept development takes place in early stage. So um, as the child was very cu curious about what is the matter, why the ice cream are not being, uh, you know, why I'm not able to sell them. So his uh, his mother just what he she did is uh, her mother just assisted. Uh, him uh, has assisted her to go to the uh, sh uh, market and see that what is the reason why the um, you know popsicles are not getting sold so after that when she uh, went there she saw and she understood see here the concept building process has taken place right so here the assistance of uh, assistant of her mother was not there completely she only uh, uh, told her to go to the market but everything which is done by the uh, girl it's, uh, itself right because she was highly motivated right so this is how the motivation works for also the kind of values the child was having helpful in um, you know formation of concept for the child and this kind of concept values what the child has now got will helpful in um, will be help, uh, helping this child to um, in the near future now uh, moving on to the next top, uh, next slide that is what is the role of teacher in development of good attitude so the teacher should be caring the teacher should show the uh, sign of kindness the teacher should share the responsibility among the children sometime what happened in the classes we uh, just put our put the um, kind of work i mean uh, either the board decoration to all those students who are very creative and don't we don't think maybe there are uh, some children who wants to participate so here we have to share the responsibilities so that each and every children will think equal about themselves then uh, sincere sen uh, sensitivity to the students we should show our sincerity to the students we should be sensitive about what they feel if the style is coming towards you for uh, something we should not show like that i'm not interested in what you are coming with but we should show that yes i have genuine feelings i will show the kind of sincerity uh, towards your problem then fostering individual instruction this is very very important we have to give individualized instruction because we are here in a, a surrounding where a lot of children come we uh, are into a school where individual differences are welcome so here we have to understand that not every student will um, go through what i am uh, teaching maybe some of them will uh, understand by some another uh, way so here we have to give individualized instructions we should always encourage the creativity creativity is something which is very important and for that we should always encourage that now it is it is possible to change self concept for the uh, uh, teachers to in a positive or a negative direction a teacher is the one who will be able to you know turn the children towards the positive side of the self concept development now uh, in the beginning only i uh, I asked you one question whether it will take place instantaneously or there is a duration by which this process takes place. So obviously it will take place within a period of time. It will take place slowly, but the uh, kind of change you will see it is remarkable. Now efforts on central belief have greater impact means what the child think about himself that is very much important for that. We have to take care of all those things that we have gone through in the previous slides now relating success and failures to one uh, one another is important here we have to make the children understand about the about the success and the failures both are uh, like um, both are interrelated you know success and failures both are uh, important for, uh, in everyone's life if you are getting every time success you won't be able to face uh, able to know that what failure is all about so failure is also important it will help you to cope up with the situations so that is very important we have to make the children aware of this um, you know concept of success and failure now create an open curing environment a teacher should always give such an environment to the student where the student will feel that yes there is a, there is a kind of care that ma'am or the sir is doing for us so by that the student will help i mean the student will develop the kind of respect for the student uh, for the teacher so it is very important to create an open caring environment 
Now, next is we need to encourage um, uh, the children to strive for worthwhile goals. It's just not like we came to the world and then we have to eat, drink, sleep, and the life is uh, all about that. No, we are here for certain goals. We are here for certain worthwhile goals. So that uh, thing, that kind of feeling, the teacher can only develop among the children. Now, praising for affair, efforts rather than innate abilities like intelligence. Sometimes what, what will happen with you that you have given some, suppose you have get, given some project work to your children. Now, there are different kinds of ch uh, children in your class. Even the cultural differences are also there, as I have already told. There are financial problems with some of the children. So. Uh, don't expect that everyone will come with the same kind of projects. Some of them will uh, may bring the project uh, which uh, which looks to be very nice. Some of the students who don't have that much, you know, they, who don't have a strong academic self will bring something, I mean, will bring the project which will not look that much good. So you don't appreciate, um, appreciate how a project looks like. You appreciate, try to appreciate the efforts they have shown. Okay, they will feel that yes, I'm being praised. They will feel that yes, I'm worthwhile. So this is very important. We have to realize that we can't always keep on praising the good ones and the other will feel inferior. We have to take everyone in a nutshell because in a school, when we are teaching, we are surrounded with lots of lots of students and every student have different kinds of cultural background, financial background. They have a, a different uh, past history. So everything, if you uh, take care of, then we uh, then you have to teach them and you have to develop a relationship with them in such a way so that they can feel comfortable so that they can feel lovable so that they start respects you so this is how your you know contribution towards the development of self concept should be like so this is um, all i have to say I hope you all are able to understand the things that we have uh, discussed in this webinar and the, all the learning objectives that I have already discussed uh, with you in the um, opening of the session that are completely fit, um, achieved up to now. So thank you all of you for joining me, uh, joining us today. Thank you, Antipa ma'am, for the wonderful session. Uh, one quote I would also like to add over here that what others think about you is not important what you think about yourself means everything so this is the idea about self-concept and i hope all the trainees they have definitely benefited with the wonderful training session so thank you dear participants attendance link has been shared in the chat box all of you can just fill the attendance and kindly fill all the details carefully thank you